Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can you greet your neighbor on behalf of me? Just tell him or her. Pastor says hi. Thank you. I know that I have a lot of friends this side of the country. Most of them we know each other through YouTube. But today we are here together to share the word of God. I really appreciate every program which have been going on in this period of time. For uh, This is my second time to be with Pastor Mark Finley. I, I'm still learning a lot from him. I, I do call him a master of calling. When Pastor Mark Finley make a call, you will never resist. Hallelujah. And also, I would like to thank God for Dr. Chidi. We have a lot in common. One of the things Dr. Chid mentioned to this evening is how sugar is dangerous to us. To me, I don't call it sugar, but I call it sweet poison. Don't even touch it. When we talk about family matters, there is no way you can avoid talking about health, stress management, and practice, exercise, and everything. Family is the foundation of everything. If you see the church is, you can call it good church, is the result of good family. Family is everything. If we have a corrupted family, we have a corrupted society. But if we'll have a good family, then we have a good society. Devil knows well that if you want to attack the church, he will begin in our family. And God also knows this. If God wants to, to bring something good to the world, God will begin in our family. So family is everything. Sometimes I do tell young men that if you want to choose a spouse, Choosing a spouse is very important, second to choosing Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the first one, but when it comes to the second thing is choosing the spouse. When you choose your spouse, you are choosing something which will give you eternal life or eternal death. You have to be very careful, young man. And during this program, we're not only talking about how we handle our marriages. We will begin at the root. We will see how we can make good spouse. We will see how we can make good relationship. We can see some tips how you can choose a perfect mate. Hallelujah. So if you want to make a very good decision, don't miss this program. And this evening, I would like to begin with the subject titled, Most Important Things Before Marriage. All Africans, we know how to cook ugali. Am I right or wrong? It doesn't matter whether you're a man or woman, you know how to cook ugali. Ugali is something which I cannot resist. I'm trying my level best sometimes to, uh, to control myself when it comes to ugali. Because ugali is so nice. But if you find somebody who cannot cook ugali, you will hate it. In East Africa, we have so-called ugali. In Kenya, they call it rice, mchele. But if, if you find somebody who can cook rice nicely, especially from Zanzibar, Tanzania, you will love rice. They know how to make it. But if you find somebody who does not know how to make rice, to cook rice, you will hate rice because you will never enjoy it. Rice with coconut is the best meal. Did you know that if you find somebody is enjoying marriage, is not something which happened overnight? It took enough time to practice, try and errors. You have to learn how to drive this institution. If you find somebody who has a very good marriage, good family, it's not a miracle. It's a plan. You have to know the formulas. 
You have to pray so that God will give you wisdom. It needs wisdom. I do tell people that love alone cannot maintain marriage. People divorce while they love each other. You know, as a counselor, I met some couples. They were about to divorce. And I did my level best to help them not to divorce. But I must admit that I failed. There are some signs in marriage we can predict that this marriage will work out or not. When you talk to them, you can predict. There are some signs. We learn th these things along the way. You can predict that th this one will make it, this one will not. Uh, when, when I was counseling this couple for the first time, the marriage was so promising. So promising. Because when they were going out of my office, after a few hours, the husband could tell me, Pastor, I'm so happy because my wife tells me that she misses me. It shows that they love each other. Loving a car does not guarantee you that you can drive it. The challenge we have nowadays, especially when I talk to young men, Pastor Ruguri will forgive me because always when I'm standing, I, I want to talk to young men because if, if we can be able to help them now, we will have very happy family in the future. I do tell them, don't buy this idea that we have to learn from mistakes. No, no, don't buy this idea. Learn from others' mistakes so that you will not repeat mistakes again in your life. There is no way you can tell me, young men, that you don't have enough material to learn how to run this institution. We have internet, we have books, we can read, we can reread. Don't read, but reread. You have to learn from your even parents. Look at your parents. Where did they make mistake so that I will not repeat it? Loving a car does not guarantee you that you can maintain it. You can love your wife. You can love your husband. But if you don't know how to love, Pastor, what do you say? Loving is a lesson. Not everybody who knows how to love. By the way, women knows how to love by nature. Men don't. That's what the Bible says. Husband should love your wives. And wives should respect your husband. Because women don't know how to respect they know how to love. <laughs> I'm just giving you a summary of what we're going to learn. But most important things before you get to marriage, you have to put this in mind. Marriage is the only institution that you get certificate before graduation. Are we together? You get certificate before graduation. It's very complicated. No wonder why nowadays we see divorce rate is going high every day. Because we have very few people who are dedicated to this institution. It needs dedication. It needs commitment it needs wisdom it needs knowledge if you want to maintain your marriage seek understanding seek wisdom there is a way men can can define certain actions as respect and there is a way women can define certain actions as loving actions there is a way men can say sorry 
Very few men knows how to say sorry, but we act. We are hunters. We know how to hunt. So when we say sorry, we don't speak out. We act. I can give you something. And that's the end of it. So when you complain that, oh, my husband doesn't say sorry, then a man will say, I said it. But we say, how did you say it? The man will say, I bought very good perfume for her. That's the way we say sorry. But does that mean men should not say sorry? No. We have to learn to say sorry. Did you know that men cannot say thank you? They have to learn to say thank you. Because by nature, about all men, not all of them, about all men, thinks that it is their right to be served. Marriage is the only institution whereby you can get certificate before graduation. It's the only university that the students are admitted without any academic qualifications. I've never seen anyone who says, if you want to marry me, give me your certificate. I want to know if you have a bachelor degree, if you have master's degree, if you have diploma. No one is saying that. If you ask young men, what kind of woman do you want? They will tell you about your appearance. They don't know that during courtship, most of those young men are just actors. They are pretending. The only thing which is guiding you is behavior, is not character. Look at your neighbor. Tell him that there is a difference between behavior and character. Behavior is the way I can behave according to environment. I am here wearing tie and suit because I'm speaking to you. But if I was teaching exercise, there is no way I can teach exercise with coats and suits. I can smile while I'm crying deep within. So the act of smiling is behavior. Character is the way I am. That's why in English or Swahili we have A character, B character, C character. C is C, whether in Kenya or Tanzania, C is C. Whether in Brittany or, or in USA, B is B. Don't marry outward look appearance. Just marry a character. The character does not change. Behavior can change. Outward appearance may change, but character does not change. We don't ask academic qualifications. I've never seen anyone during courtship who says that, wait a minute, I'm a hot tempered. No one says that. No one says, wait a minute, I want to marry you, but always, if I get angry, I can beat you. No one says that. Every man pretend to be a gentleman. But I'm telling you this evening, when you get into marriage, it's the only house where you can learn the, two, the true character of a person. Before marriage, everybody is good. Before marriage, the Lord is good. Before marriage, I'm a good person. But you cannot act for a long time. When you get into it, you will reveal the true nature of you. That's when you will ask yourself, did I make a right choice or wrong one? And for those who believe that nowadays God gives you a husband or woman, be careful on this. God does not choose for you, but God presents for you. You choose for yourself. Yeah. 
So when things go wrong, don't blame God, but blame yourself. And if you blame yourself, is the sign that you are ready to learn something. Is there any hope for broken families? Yes, there is. We have God who can change stone to bread. Hallelujah. We have God who divided the Red Sea. We have God who can heal the leper. We have God who can clean anything unclean. We have God. Even if you see your family as if it's going down to death, I have good news for you tonight. God can heal your family. There is hope for your family. Marriage, the college, whereby students can mark their own exams and decide their own grade is <laughs> the bad thing. <laughs> it's the good one. <laughs> this kind of college in marriage, you can mark your own exams. And I do tell couples, if you don't sit down and begin to examine your marriage, you are going to fail. Don't wait until somebody else examine your marriage. You have to do yourself. Sit down, two of you. Ask yourself, are we going the right path? Are we doing the right thing? Is this marriage a blessing or a curse? Do you know if there is a tough thing is to live with someone in the same house which the brain define him or her as the enemy and you can't run away you are sleeping the same bed eating from the same table but you don't talk but i love those old couples they can fight within and smile outside There is hope. Hallelujah. Marriage is the only class where there is no examination supervisors. Mm. No one will tell you, sit properly. Don't look to somebody. Just, just flow materials from yourself. No one. Friends, I would like to tell you this. If there is anyone who can save your marriage... It's you and God. No one else. No one else. Know your parents, even your friends, your pastors, counselors. Counselors may just guide you to something, but they will not save your marriage if you are not ready to. Take responsibility. You, you, sometimes you have to criticize yourself. Is, it is the examination paper that contains same questions. But everyone is using his own way or method of solving problems. But at the end, you will get the same answers or common mistakes. You know, when someone says, Pastor, I want to divorce, I do ask them, will you marry again? They say yes. Will you get a person from heaven? No, from the earth. Then do you think the other one will be better than the previous one? Sometimes they say yes. But I've met some other couples after divorce. I do examine them. I ask them, how do you find the new marriage? You see, pastor, for past six months, I was enjoying. And what next? After six months. I think the previous one is better than this one. It is good for you to wait. You know the challenge we have nowadays, this generation is the generation which wants everything faster. They want to finish school today. They get job today. They want to marry today. They want to get children today. If it takes some time, they want to divorce. They want everything to go well today. They, they don't have muscles to wait. 
Even trees does not grow one night. It needs time. Give your wife or husband time. We need time. If you want to have a good marriage, ask God to give you self-control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Failing to understand how to run this institution leads many to misery and pain. Unfortunately, when you cause pain after divorce or any problem in marriage, you don't only wound yourself, but you wound innocent children. You wound others. You know, when I look at the couples who are divorcing, I do tell them, I don't care about you. Sometimes they say, Pastor, but you are very rude. I say, no, I'm not rude, but I'm straight on this. I don't care about you. Because you met somewhere, you never invited us. You just told us that you want to get married, and we agreed. We gave you a certificate. But did you know that you are giving hard time innocent children who even don't know what is going on, you are giving them hard time, and some of them, they are under psychological problems just because of family conflicts. Dr. Miles Monry says, and I have spoken and lectured in seminars, conferences, and conventions across the complete spectrum of socioeconomic strata. I have seen, listen to this, I have seen the scars of divorce manifest themselves like open wounds without bitterness, hatred. The scars. I, I know when, when I'm saying this, maybe you are sitting somewhere and you say, Pastor, I'm listening to you. I'm a divorced person. Is there any hope? Yes, there is hope in Jesus. You cannot reverse everything, but Jesus can heal your scars. We have Jesus who will never condemn you for the past sins. We have Jesus who is dealing with the present situation. Dr. Miles Monroe says, much of modern society around the world is experiencing the negative results of this relationship. Tragedy. In simple terms, divorce is the physical and legal termination of a marital war that was intended to last forever. God intended marriage to last forever. Is only seen cause this kind of separation. Divorce may create more problems than it solves. If you look at it closely, the great impact of it can be seen among children who are innocent, as I said. Uh, one day I was counseling one lad who refused to be married. And when I was asking her, why, why don't you want to be married? Say, Pastor, I don't see any importance of marriage. I said, why? She says, my, my mother stayed in marriage for 20 years. But now she's no longer there. And I saw everything my dad was doing to my mother. And when I see men, I see the picture of my dad in them. Even yourself. I'm talking to you just because you're a pastor. L let me pause for a while. I want this to sink in your brain. We may have our differences as couples, but please make sure you don't reveal these to children. Solve them inside. The emotional effects of it is unbearable. The spiritual damage is unavoidable. 
only God can heal. Only God can heal. Economical setback is beyond repair. It touches more than one family. But keep these things in mind. This is just part one of it. Tomorrow we'll go on part two. But keep this in mind. Marriage is not man's idea. It's God's idea. So if you see anything does not go the right way, don't ask your pastor first. Don't ask your counselor first. Go to Jesus first. And if God will use your pastor to repair your marriage, well and good. If God will use your counselor to repair your marriage, well and good. But don't go to pastor or counselor before consulting God first. Because it's God's idea, we have to go back to God. God is everything. You remember Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, Good News Bible says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to live alone. I will make a suitable companion to help him. It is God who said, It's not good. Singleness. Is something to enjoy before marriage. Hallelujah. Singleness is being you. From tomorrow, we will see what is singleness, what to be alone, and what is loneliness. If you will never understand these differences between singleness, loneliness, and being alone, you will get into marriage without knowledge. Enjoy your singleness before enjoying marriage. Let us stand for the word of prayer. Loving Father, the one who created marriage, you have a big idea about marriage. As human beings after sin, we undermine this. But through these seminars, you want to draw us near to you. I'm praying for the marriage which are going through difficulties. Maybe someone tonight is going through tough times in marriage. They have lost hope completely. They don't see anything good. But tonight I'm praying for them, Father. The one who can heal anything. Can you make this marriage whole again? Can you heal this marriage again? I'm praying for the children who are going through psychological torture because of some misunderstanding in marriage. May you heal them. Before they meet any psychological profession, meet them, Lord. Because you are more than a counselor. You are the creator. You can create a new thing. Father, I'm praying for everyone and let them see this miracle and enjoy marriage as you decided to be that our families will be another paradise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.